Hello again, Flight Sim friends. A uh, quick look today at the um, the custom programmable uh, button pad or keypad or uh, mini keyboard, whatever you want to call it. Um, it is a Cooler Tron 48 key uh, programmable keyboard. It comes with white and black keys, all blank. I've used some basic mailing labels cut up into tiny little pieces to give it some labels. And I have it mounted vertically, uh, or 90, I guess 90 degrees, mounted essentially vertically in the center of my flight sim panel. And this is to serve the purpose of all the buttons I don't have hardware buttons for yet. The uh, honeycomb yoke, I have the yoke. I do not have the throttle quadrant yet. It is still back ordered, waiting two more months, I think, for it. Sadly, I didn't get around, I didn't get in the round of the first shipment. So, still waiting. So as a result, a lot of the things I need and want to use, I have to have other buttons for. Instead of using the regular keyboard, which I technically could use, um, I opted for a, a button panel that I could label and set up, configure exactly as I wanted to, um, and not have to remember what does the button L do, or the F1 key, or the number 6. Instead, I can just set up a keyboard that does exactly what I want. So as you can see here, I've got uh, some color coding. The All the buttons with the, with the little red border and the big red one there is autopilot. So that's all for the auto the standard autopilot settings. I realize that they're laid out differently than they would be normally on a, say, a G1000 or on a custom panel, but autopilot's different in uh, every plane you're in uh, to a large degree, so um, it doesn't really matter. Um, they're labeled consistently. Uh, these orange, these highlighted orange buttons, or yellow, are essentially simulation control. So um, I've got a uh, button in the top left for the kind of master pause. That's the it's, Essentially, it's the escape key that pauses the simulator and gets you back to the main menu. The uh, the arrow key is like an enter, uh, is regular enter key. Um, so, uh, you know, use that as you need to. And then this target button, um, I'll come back to that in a second. All these buttons down here have to do with uh, views, really external views. Um, on the on the honeycomb yoke, I have this the right number. I, don't, I think it's number three, maybe the button three or four. Uh, the right but the right white small white button here is uh, internal external uh, view switching from the cockpit view to external view. When I'm in the external view, I can then use one of these ten buttons to basically go through all the external camera. Um, the, the external camera uh, views. I label them all for uh, one particular aircraft and discovered that they're not consistent uh, between aircraft. They are just labeled in the simulator as external view 1 through 10, or 1 through 0 really, 1 through 9 and then 0, but they don't aren't consistent where they go. A couple of them are fairly reliable, like the, the tail forward looking view, the belly camera um, is I think I've discovered those usually are the same, but every other, other other one seems to change a little bit. Some of them match up, some of them don't. Then on the bottom here, there's the track IR buttons, so I can um, pause the track IR tracking. So if I want to, uh, if I get a little fatigue from from the uh, display moving around with my head, then I can just pause track IR. And then the uh, the other one is the recenter for track IR. So if, if it drifts off or I change my physical position and I need to recenter it, or for someone else flying who's taller or further sits further back, then uh, the repositioning. And um, part of the key to the repositioning for me is that my track IR sits way up here on top of the main screen, and it's uh, a bit higher than it normally would be for a, a regular monitor. So um, as you move forward and back, the track IR... Um, tends to drift a bit in a strange way. So um, so it's helpful to have a, a convenient button, a, a dedicated button to recenter that without having to look at the keyboard and um, and then you know find the F12 key, which I think is the default mapping. So it's easy enough to do that. The centering button up here is has to do with uh, the some of the bugs with window focusing in Flight Sim. I've discovered that if you have a a panel open, such as the map, the uh, VFR map. What we'll do actually, we'll go, we'll go open that guy up right now. We'll open up the VFR map. Sorry, I don't have screen recording for this. I'm still uh, fairly new to this whole video thing. But so, if that window is open and in the main sim screen, like it is here, then typically things aren't an issue. 
Um, but I've discovered that if you pop this window out and say move it to another screen, which is very common uh, in the realm of having having the instrument panels when you have a G1000, for example, control or uh, instrumentation, and you pop that panel out and you move it to another screen. While this is still this while this is still the main sim program, it's a different window, and when you are active in this window, I've noticed sometimes the joystick inputs get lost and they uh, they get swallowed up by something and they don't end up going to the sim. Which, if you're trying to land, and you all of a sudden un are focused outside of your uh, your main window, then you have no control input, which can be a little disastrous. So. What I've done is I've taken that button and I've mapped it to some key combination. I forget what it is. It's, a, it's not that relevant. But it is using Auto Hotkey, a, a utility program for Windows that will do all kinds of things. It's worth looking into for any kind of automation. And I've mapped it so that it will automatically move the cursor to the very top right corner of my screen, of my main display window, um, using the coordinate system of the, of the display system and then click once. So if I go down here and I move into this window and I click in the Air Manager window, um, I'm technically not focused in Flight Sim. My, my mouse focus or my window focus is not in Flight Sim. So what I'll do is I will go down and press that button and with any luck that cursor will disappear and it's now up in the corner here and it's clicked once to essentially refocus your, your your keyboard and mouse input. Um, that's the other issue is that the keyboard, because this is a just a keyboard, it, uh, it has to be focused in the window in Flight Sim to have an effect, whereas the joysticks are, are mapped directly into the Sim, so it's not a problem. But uh, if for some reason I focus my, wind, my uh, mouse outside of, or I move my Windows focus outside of the Sim, for example, to look at a map, or, uh, or even for the Air Manager windows, as soon as I try to do one of these, use one of these buttons, nothing will happen. So I have to press that to refocus um, into the flight sim window, and then these buttons now are gonna, they're, because again, they're just keyboard buttons, um, they will then, the signal, or the, uh, the keyboard input will then go into, into the sim and have the desired effect. So it's handy, very, very handy to have a dedicated button on this panel um, if, I've, if I need to refocus without having to find my mouse, especially having three displays, the mouse pointer can get lost very easily, so it's convenient to uh, just press that button once and then I'm focused where I need to be. So this turned out this has turned out to be a fairly very useful little device. Um, the programming for this Coolertron keyboard is fairly straightforward. They have a decent utility in a couple different languages, and um, you can save the settings. You can map different settings. The keyboard does have the ability to have different pro profiles. And you can map certain buttons to switch those profiles if you want to move around between different software. But I'm using it dedicated for this sim, so I only have the default profile loaded up with uh, the, the mappings I care about. Um, there are a couple lights in the back, too, that, that would light up to show you which profile it's on, but that's unnecessary. I took the, 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 uh, the case that it came with and uh, removed it and just took the, the innards of... The keyboard and built my own wooden, my own wooden frame. It's not really easy to see here because of it's. It kind of blends in. Got a little scuff mark on it uh, while installing the button or the uh, knobster. But um, it's just a custom wooden case, thin wooden sides, just to kind of match up. Um, partly because the default case that comes with it actually has a a, a slight, maybe a five degree tilt to it, um, and the way that the buttons were oriented. Um, made it tilt in the wrong direction. So it would have been useful to have it tilted towards towards the pilot, um, but I really wanted it just flat, so I just made a, I made a made my own case for it. That way it also mounts a little bit closer to the panel, even though it still is, you know, as deep as a keyboard would be, but it's, but it's not too bad. It's maybe three quarters of an inch deep, and maybe another uh, fraction of an inch, maybe another quarter of an inch out to the front of the buttons. So the buttons probably come out about a, an inch from the main panel surface. But it's uh, it worked very nicely. It's in a convenient location, um, compact and completely programmable. I've always I've already reprogrammed several of the buttons as I've adjusted what I needed to do with it, so it's worked nicely. So I recommend that again. It's the Coolertron Coolertron keyboard. 
48 button programmable. Uh, I will put a link to it in the description. Thanks.